Welcome back to our ongoing series on cyclic vomiting syndrome with Dr. V. I'm Steve Wartenberg and this is Dr. Thangam Venkatesan. Today's topic is all about the differences between CVS and adults, which is what we've been focusing on in previous episodes, and CVS in younger patients, and how to transition the treatment and care of these adolescents as they become adults. We have a special guest and expert in this area, Dr. Desole Yacob, a pediatric gastroenterologist at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Thanks for joining us, Des. It's great to be here, and thank you for having me. Give us an idea of how you two kind of came to collaborate together. Our group has been interested in uh, cyclic vomiting syndrome, and historically, the studies and the initial work in pediatric CVS was done at Nationwide Children's Hospital. Back then, it used to be Columbus Children's Hospital. So Dr. Billy was uh, here, and he started his work on CVS, and we have always followed his um, research and what he was doing even when he was um, gone from Columbus and was in Milwaukee. And uh, Dr. Venkatesan happens to also be there, and she uh, did a lot of the work, most of the work on uh, CVS when it pertains to adult patients. So when we found out that you were heading this way, we were very excited because that meant we will have a, a collaborator on the other side um, or in the uh, adult uh, GI. So um, then we connected and her husband happens to be a pediatric <laughs> gastroenterologist, so he is at, Nationwide, at Children. Nationwide Children's Hospital. So it made it much easier and I've already um, had the uh, opportunity to kind of uh, push this forward. Now, we, like I said, we've been talking mostly about adult CVS. So mm -hmm. what are some of the differences and maybe even similarities that, that you see? Most patients start having uh, these episodes early on, like in, their, uh, in the first 10 years. And they continue to uh, suffer from cyclic vomit syndrome. Some of them may outgrow it and may stop having the cyclic vomit syndrome, but a lot of them go on to have cyclic vomit syndrome as adults. Uh, so uh, the uh, presentation and uh, the impact on their daily function and life is very similar. So there is a lot of similarities. The same uh, syndrome, it's the same problem, it just happens that in pediatrics, they're gonna be missing school days, they're gonna be missing uh, birthdays, or the ability to socialize and go and hang out with their friends, versus in adults, they're uh, unable to go and work and uh, do all the other things uh, adults do. Uh, so it's the same problem, it just happens to uh, impact different age groups. Yeah, I mean, growing up is, can be tough enough as mm -hmm. nor, when you don't have these medical issues, that, that's pretty tough for a kid to go yeah, through this. And even when you think about it, uh, cyclic vomiting syndrome by definition is something that is cyclical. It yeah. happens every so often. It could happen every four weeks, every two months, every uh, six months, for every um, time that they have an episode, they're out for a few days. It's not just a one-time episode of throwing up. It's something that starts and could go on for uh, four, five, six days. Uh, and that means like being out of um, commotion for uh, that long. So it's very impactful and it's very um, uh, debilitating when it comes to uh, the, its impact on the child. Like Des says, you know, this initially though it was thought to be a pediatric disorder, it's very clear now that it can present as early as age two when I do have patients who we call adult onset. A 12-year-old becomes a 15, 16, 18-year-old, mm -hmm. that's where you two would meet and talk about it or how would that work? The transition actually starts when you first meet them and it starts by the fact that you're educating them on their problem, you're educating them on the importance of their taking their medications, the names of their medications, and they're actually the ones that will educate their providers to some degree. Because if they know a lot about their problem, they are able to advocate for themselves and they're able to uh, bring up exactly what has been happening with them and what they need. But then this collaboration when you know someone is just as invested in the care of children with cyclic vomiting syndrome, you have that uh, peace um, and 
you're able to, you know, reach out, make that phone call, uh, which we have done <laughs> multiple times. I have this 18-year-old who has had cyclic vomit syndrome. I would love for him to come see you, and it's like, yeah, I can see him this week, kind of deal. So that is uh, priceless, and you don't really find it everywhere. I think uh, we are fortunate that we have uh, this um, collaborative uh, system here. So one of the things, um, I'm sure you're thinking the same yeah. thing. <laughs> one of the things that is really important in caring for uh, children with sickly vomit syndrome is that you put together a letter. A letter that says so-and-so has sickly vomit syndrome, was diagnosed at this age, and uh, they are on this medications. Uh, they have been worked up and these things have been rolled out. If they show up in your emergency room, please do these following things. So if they have that letter, they could take it anywhere. An actual paper letter? An or actual, like an actual le uh, paper letter because, you know, our electronic system may not communicate Match. with yeah. um, the el electronic system in, you know, Nebraska where this uh, young man is going to school. I think we're very fortunate that we have mm -hmm. a very strong uh, pediatric GI, neuro GI program at Nationwide. And, and so, uh, you know, in some ways it's easier for us to make mm -hmm. this transition in Columbus. And, 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 you know, certainly adolescents as they become adults, you know, there are multiple challenges. Um, the education piece is, is very important. And so I think, uh, you know, the transition can be challenging and certainly, you know, I think very close collaboration on both sides mm -hmm. is, is, is very important. And I think the patient can feel reassured that, hey, I do have this other person who's, who's communicating with somebody on the other side uh, again as far as education and training we sort of you know cross over yeah. and maybe uh, Des I'll let you yeah. talk a little bit about what's going on uh, with that <laughs> yeah I think I think the first thing that happened when you uh, came to Columbus was that we were both invited to give a talk on single vomit syndrome at uh, the uh, ANMS the ANMS is um, uh, American Neurogastro and Motility Society so they have their annual conference those educational opportunities are meant to educate our colleagues. These are colleagues who are GI specialists, yeah, but G not necessarily CVS specialists. Exactly. I mean, just because you're a pediatric gastroenterologist or a gastroenterologist does not mean you have um, the uh, depth of knowledge about cyclic vomit syndrome. Okay, well, thank you both. This has been great, and thank you for watching, and stay tuned for more episodes on what you need to know about CVS.